In yesterday's fishing spat over the waters of Jersey, just off the coast of France, the EU accused the UK of breaching the terms of the Trade and Cooperation Agreement, TCNA between the two sides. The EU's behavior is not unexpected given the unfolding crisis within the bloc and brought the potential for serious political earthquakes and the crucial Franco-German alliance into sharp relief. The row threatened to escalate with naval gunboats on the scene amid threats of France cutting off electricity to the British Crown dependency, something even the Nazis didn't do. The TCNA simply sets out a system for maintaining some pre-Brexit fishing rights. French fishermen were apparently disgruntled about having to provide electronic monitoring data to prove they had previously operated in Jersey's waters. But read between the lines, and this is a France and EU in fear, having bungled the pandemic crisis. From coronabans onwards, the EU is facing looming instability, especially with the coming departure of Angela Merkel as German Chancellor, someone who more than anyone else has helped hold the club together. On top of that, there is now a real threat of Marine Le Pen becoming French president next year. Although Ms. Le Pen's party officially abandoned leaving the EU, that could change once in power. In the beggar thy neighbor, devil take the hindmost policies of EU countries during the coronavirus crisis, we have seen the real face of the bloc. When the ships are down, everyone scrambles for the lifeboat and to hell with the others. Southern Europe is likely to be left in an even more indebted and impoverished condition, while Central and Eastern Europe is increasingly ostracized as it moves away from the liberal consensus of the Brussels elite. Polling suggests that both French and Italian support for leaving the EU could be substantial if Brexit is seen to be a success, a major concern for Eurocrats. Back in France, Disapproval ratings for the French president are currently around 59% and have been in that range for the best part of a year, while voting intention currently has Ms. Le Pen ahead of President Macron in the first round although currently not the second. That said, the gap is closing. This will no doubt terrify Brussels and Paris, threatening to impede future federalism if not implode the entire project. No doubt the French president may feel the need to adopt an especially tough stance with the UK appeasing the fisheries constituency who could be pivotal to his re-election chances. In this context we can appreciate the recent sabre rattling. Of course, the EU was always going to play hardball with the UK, lest other restless member states thought of leaving, especially those in Central and Eastern Europe who would have a natural partner in a President Le Pen, and who have, for the most part, kept their own currencies and could therefore extricate themselves more easily from the club than Eurozone members like Greece or Italy. The EU appreciates the Le Pen threat and the potential instability of an outgoing Chancellor Merkel. President Macron, no doubt playing to a domestic audience, may feel the need to maintain a tough stance, while the EU will use everything at its disposal to punish Britain lest other states think of going their own way. Perhaps all the UK requires is a little patience until this house of cards collapses.